Hey guys, what's on Trace? So today I'm going to be showing you how to remove and install a new CPU. So that's the computer that I'm going to be installing the new CPU in. So I'm just going to lift up the computer and just put it uh, in a clean spot where I've uh, made everything tidy. Okay, so this uh, that's the AIO that I need to remove to get at the CPU. Your cooler might be different, but you can uh, look at the hand manual for your cooler if you'd like to know how to remove it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my camera down and point it uh, as I unscrew the AIO. Now obviously, again, uh, check your manual on how to do this in case you don't have the same AIO or you have one that looks very like mine. But basically, uh, just go through your manual and take a look at how to remove it. If you know how to remove your cooler, then you can just do that. But if you uh, mess up removing the cooler, then I'm not liable. Basically, if you mess something up during this, I'm not liable. And actually, it's the CPU that's recording uh, Audacity, so it worked for me. And therefore, it should work for you. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that is the AIO just coming off so now what you do is you just lift this out and unplug it make sure not to yank the cables actually pull the plastic bit that plugs in and I'm just gonna sit that down somewhere where it's not gonna get in the way so I'll tuck it in there and it should be nice and safe so you can see the retention arm here uh, what you're gonna do there may be two of them but basically that holds the CPU in place so you just push that out away from the CPU pull up and it will make a very loud click um, so don't be worried about that uh, I might add the click sound in so next you're just gonna put, uh, put your fingers in a pincer around the CPU and pull it out, don't touch the gold pins um, so I'm just getting ready as CPUs are quite well they're surprisingly heavy for what they look like so uh, I'm just setting up a place where I can put it down where the pins won't get damaged because it will kill the CPU if the pins are in any way damaged. There is ways to fix it but I'm not willing to risk killing a perfectly good CPU to show you um, how to fix it and also quite often the work, uh, it doesn't work because the pins are so small. Okay so uh, I think I'm about ready to lift it off now. Um, I'm just cleaning out a space where I can put it down and getting the new CPU ready and just basically getting everything set up. Um, so I'm also getting something called a ground which is a way to take static electricity away from you. So basically what you need is you need something big and metal that plugs into the ground um, and has metal on the outside because it's uh, illegal for it uh, to not be grounded uh, but it must be plugged into the wall and um, must have metal on and, and I would hope it was from a respectable brand anyway so uh, next I'm just gonna clean it out and pincer my fingers around like this and uh, just right now take a note of where there should be a little golden triangle on your CPU so just take a note where that is. For me it's in the top left hand side so I'm going to check the retention arms all the way back, pince around the CPU and just pull it straight out. So there's the CPU. As you can see there's gold pins on the bottom. You do not at all costs want to get any of them damaged, touched or in any way covered in anything. Those are exceedingly important to the CPU's function. One of those bent or something. Okay so here's part two. Uh, and that is installing the, your new CPU. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the new CPU out of its packet and just carry it over. So as you can see, the um, the AIO has a little bit of dried on thermal paste, which isn't the nicest and will affect performance. So uh, what I'm going to do is just take a cloth that's been soaked in rubbing alcohol and rub that off. You can do this without a cloth that's been soaked in rubbing alcohol and it only needs to have a little bit but I was actually doing this without the rubbing alcohol. 
So you can see what it's like. It basically comes off like uh, butter when you've got the rubbing alcohol. But this stuff's pretty badly caked on, so I'm just gonna have to really hard, uh, really like push hard and clean it off. So as you can see, it's uh, coming off reasonably well. Uh, there seems to be still a little bit that's being a little bit tough, um, but I will, I'll get that off eventually. So there's what it's after, uh, like after a few minutes or a few seconds actually. So as you can see, it is working without the rubbing alcohol, although it would work probably in a few seconds if you had the rubbing alcohol. So I do recommend getting rubbing alcohol to clean off, it's just not a requirement, it'll just make your life much, much, much easier. Okay, so it's nearly cleaned off, uh, it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be clean enough, but the, there is not too much caked on. As you can see in the middle, there is still a little bit, and I believe it's actually formed into the shape of the impeller, so uh, it's kind of cool. Maybe that gets really hot or something, and that's why it's caked on so bad, so I'm just going to move my camera so you get a bit of a better camera angle. Oh, my camera just fell over. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to try and move this uh, into place so you can see my uh, my tripod is my tripod is way too small. So uh, I'm just sitting on top of the bin and it just fell off. Um, I will continue trying. Okay, there we go. So it has been moved, and you can now see the socket. So I'm just grabbing the new CPU from where I've set it up to be easy to pick up. Um, so here's the new CPU. It came in a little bit of foam just to, again, protect the pins. Because obviously, if the pins get damaged, that is the CPU done for good so you do not mess with the pins okay so i'm just checking they're all clean and there's no damage as i actually bought this for around nine pounds so if it works which it did uh, um, then i will link the seller ebay seller uh, so it's actually working right now okay so what you're gonna do is just line up the golden uh, triangle and just get everything ready and then you're just gonna let it gently uh, drop in. You're not actually going to drop it. But as you can see there it's all in so just check around the sides check that it's actually in the socket. There shouldn't be a gap between it and the socket and on, uh, what you're going to do is uh, just lower down the retention arm. Now it may take a little bit of force so do give it a little and once it's nearly down you're just going to uh, pull it in, to, uh, push it out away from the CPU, get it the final remaining bit and then push it in and there will be a little thing to hold it down. So now I'm just getting um, a little bit of thermal paste that it came with and uh, I actually need some scissors to open this because the rip line did not work. So uh, yeah, it's just me feeble attempts at trying to open it and it's not working. So uh, what I'm going to do, by the way, is just uh, so I do something called knead the uh, knead the um, packet, which is basically where you just squish it around um, because there might be a little bit of like lubricant mixed, uh, like has settled away from the actual thermal place. So just mix that round and then uh, I've got my scissors here. I'm just going to cut a little corner off so it's easy enough to apply and it's a little bit open but really not enough. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, yeah, still cutting it. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little blob right in the middle. So I'm just going to put the whole pack because these packs are designed to do one CPU. Uh, so next, just going to check over that. Check that looks about the right amount. That seems a little bit much but uh, yeah, I'll just try and scrape a little bit off there. Right, there we go. Uh, so what you're going to do, there's many ways to put thermal paste on, but I like to just rub it on with my finger because uh, that that basically just makes, like, lets you know that the CPU is 
properly covered. So, uh, just gonna rub it around. You might need to clean your fingers after this. This isn't the highest of quality of thermal paste, so it was quite watery. Um, but it still works uh, fine. So, yeah, just gonna rub it around and just check that everything's covered. It doesn't need to be 100% perfect. It's a little bit of patch, patch I missed there, but it doesn't need to be absolutely 100% perfect. As long as the majority is covered and the middle is covered well. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get, um, yeah, I'm just gonna grab my screwdriver. Okay, so, uh, yes. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Uh, so obviously I'm recording this after the actual video, so I appear to... Aha. Uh -huh. I think I'm cleaning my hands, I... Okay, uh, okay. Um, I'm putting the AIO back on, so you might want to clean your hands before this, because thermal paste gets everywhere, because it's like gloopy and everything, so I'm just gonna get these two screws in place, and um, yeah, just check that they're they're in the right place and they'll go into the holes fine because I hate having to take it back off. So yeah, I'm just gonna screw on the AIO. Now you want to do this again how your manual says, but you want to do this evenly because you don't want one side of the CPU to uh, be utterly pushed and the other side to be completely loose. Funny story, I have actually done that. I only screwed on one side and I screwed that side on way too tight and uh, I booted up the computer and I wasn't sure. I was like, hmm, is this thermal paste good? So I went into the BIOS and it said it's running to 80 degrees and like going up like 80, 90, like, like to the cutoff point. I was like, oh god. And just uh, press the wall switch. Okay, so just uh, make sure to plug whatever you're using back in. Because the last thing you want is for it to be turned off. Okay, so just uh, double check that these are definitely, completely, certainly tight. And uh, just uh, be completely certain that these are tight. Because the last thing you want is for these to be loose. Because it could very well completely destroy your CPU. So I'm just gonna keep checking over them again because I'm uh, slightly worried. Uh, it, it's never happened to me. I mean, the fact that the CPU has survived half a heatsink on should be enough, but um, there's lots of precautions in place for CPU overheating, like thermal margins and everything. But if it does it uh, really fast, sometimes it won't be able to pick up on it. Um, but yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised I didn't crack the CPU when it heated up that fast, but I didn't. Okay, so uh, here's the company that I got it off of, so I'm very happy it was used, but having looked at the quality of the CPU, uh, if it has been used, it can't have been used much, it's practically brand new. So as you can see here, AMD Phenom 2 uh, X3 710 running at 2.6 gigahertz. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to unlock the Phenom to run at better with four four cores, which was successful, by the way. So Inobiz Korea Incorporated uh, supplied me the CPU. Anyway, I will have their eBay page linked. Yeah, it got a little ripped. Uh, when I opened it because I was quite excited. So as you can see, for a CPU including delivery, which was two-day delivery from Korea, £14. I think that's pretty good. Uh, the packaging was good. So yeah, hopefully this works. And uh, I didn't actually know at this point whether it was going to survive. So I'm just going to get the old CPU packaged up as I'm selling it. I'll check that it's working and everything. I'm not... I am not a scam artist. Uh, yeah, I'll also show you, they gave me two of these packets, so uh, yeah.
Sorry about the camera angle. Anyway, so yeah, that's everything screwed on and uh, ready to boot pretty much. So, uh, yes. That's uh, Cinebench open now. Um, so you can see my old phenom is going 108 right there. Oh, wait, no, that's the i5. 108 overclocked at uh, full. That's a um, unlock, so that is what a stock phenom would look like. 123. Easy enough to remember. 1, 2, 3. So I'm just running CPU test now. And there goes. Okay, 7 at stock. So. Let's overclock it. Um, I probably will just do this. Um, now I did have a few programs open, so it'll probably score a little better. But uh, it's just gonna shut down. There we go. Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in I could swear that this room has been running out of air And now it's starting to spin You make me feel kind of bad 